evening, good night, good morning, good afternoon. My name is E. Jim G. Ross. Thanks for downloading this podcast. The website is rickyradio.com. We are going to be giving you a lecture about karma, karma dharma, the law of karma and dharma, which is the same law of cause and effect. So we could say karma is equivalent to accounts payable with nature, with the divinity, and dharma should correspond to accounts receivable. You know, we can also call it good luck and bad luck. When something happens to us unexpectedly and we receive good things from life, this is account receivable, good luck or dharma. And karma is accounts payable, bad luck. We don't know why we're suffering. We, nothing happens with us, you know. Everything we do doesn't work. Well, it's important to try to understand all of this, you know. This is a very ancient knowledge connected with the ancient Hindu religion, you know. Lately, some Christian leaders, including some Baptist leaders from the U.S., you know, they are crit criticizing the Hindu religion, saying that the, their practices of yoga, their teachings of yoga coming from Hindu religion defies the Christian faith. Well, respectfully, we have to disagree with this, uh, you know, reverence or pastors, Baptist leader, you know, who is uh, calling for Christian to avoid yoga and his spiritual attachments. And the point now is, uh, with all respect, you know, if we study the Gnostic Gospels, and we go deeper and deeper within Gnosticism, we tell our students and we tell the world that all religions are good. The problem is people don't understand their own religion, you know. The word religion is coming from Latin religare, that means reconnect, rejoin. Reconnect what? Well, we are disconnected. Disconnected from whom? From where? Well, the human machine, let's call it that way, the human organism that includes mind, body, and soul, and emotions, and instinctive life, and physicality, is disconnected from the divinity, which is our own spiritual being, our real being. So that's the purpose of all religions. So the Hindu religion has the same purpose than Christianity. Also, the most Muslim religion, the Jewish religion, the ancient religion, the ancient Tao religion from ancient China and Tibet. The Tibetan actual religion is also Buddhism. Buddhism is coming from Tibet and also Japan. Buddhism Zen from Japan and Buddhism Chan from Tibet. Well, again, all religions have a purpose, which is to teach us to reconnect, to rejoin, because we are disconnected from the divinity. So the law of karma is a way of teaching us that there is an economy of nature and is connected with the law of justice. Where is the concept of justice coming from? It's coming from ancient times. All sacred books speak about justice. The scale, you know, the scale. You know, sometimes they represent Mother Nature or justice. A woman, you know, blinded, blindfolded, carrying a scale. You know, that scale represents justice. There is divine justice, cosmic justice, and also human justice. So this is all connected with the law of karma, dharma. Whatever we do, you know, has a price. Nothing is free. Even the air that we breathe, we have to pay for it. 
if we don't breathe properly, you know, we don't get the oxygen that we need. So we don't own really anything, you know. When we die, we have to return our physical bodies unless we learn the secrets to reach, you know, resurrection. And this is also a cosmic law. So coming back into the law of karma, dharma, coming from yoga, uh, we say respectfully to all those people who disagree with yoga that they are, you know, they are not knowledgeable enough. They should study and go deeper within their own religion. If you are a Christian, you know, you should study the Gnostic Gospels because they've been all considered as authentic by the experts and all religious, you know, leaders, mainly the Pope from the Catholic Church and all Christian leaders, including the Baptist leaders, do agree that the, Gosp the Gnostic Gospels are authentic. When you study them, when you discover them, when you immerse within their studies, you realize the connection with all religions. These Gospels apparently were taken away in ancient times from, you know, the founders of Christianity and the founders of the Catholic Church. I wouldn't say Jesus Christ and his apostles. I would say those who came after. Well, what were the reasons? Well, there were many reasons, you know. There was a conflict among all Christian groups. And that conflict made, provided the division or made possible the division of so many Christian groups, including the Catholic groups, Catholic Church. So coming back into the law of karma, dharma, Remember uh, that prayer developed by Jesus Christ, our Father. Remember our Father? I'm not going to repeat it, but just I want you who is listening to study it. There is a moment that it says, forgive our trespasses the same way we forgive those who trespass against us. What's the meaning of that? This is the law of karma dharma. How can I ask God to forgive me my debts, my accounts payable, if I cannot forgive those who owe me, those who did harm to me? So if I want to create accounts receivable or dharma or good luck, I have to earn it. I have to deserve it because there is justice. There is cosmic justice. There is divine justice. Okay, don't forget that. Maybe our human justice is not perfect. Of course not. Even if we try harder to get there, remember there is corruption. There is, there is police corruption from time to time. There are lawyers who are corrupt. Not all of them, but many of them. And there are judges who judge the wrong way, who commit mistakes. But divine justice is perfect. You see, in ancient Egypt, you know, the law of karma was also expressed in a different way. The 42 judges, the 42 judges of cosmic law, it means 42 angels that applied divine cosmic law on earth. That includes, for sure, the entire solar system. Because there is life everywhere. Maybe we don't believe it. Well, let's see what's going to happen in the near future when we discover there is life in other planets different than ours. So the 42 judges and the Prince Anubis, according to Egyptian tradition, represent the 42 angels and their leader, Anubis, the angel Anubis, Master Anubis, they are the ones who live here on earth and they have a temple of cosmic justice where all of us are going to be judged after we die physically on the other side. We don't have to believe it. We don't have to agree with it. But my duty is to share this information with you so you can explore your own avenues to 
try to understand better what we are trying to say. So, in ancient times, you know, the Romans described cosmic justice, divine justice, like the lions of justice, the lions of justice. And they portrayed, you know, the judges as lions, the, the kings, kings of nature, the kings of the jungle, who can judge us and rule our lives, connected with the, also with the, our own destiny. Because according to the law of karma dharma, we've been here many, many times. Life is not only one, one life. We've been here around for maybe millions of years. Because the spirit never dies. The spirit has always been, will always be. And the spirit needs a human organism, a human machine, to operate within the physical world and the parallel universes. So we could say the vehicles of the spirit. And then we die, we continue alive on the other side until we get another human organism to be able to come back through our physical parents. This is also connected with the law of karma dharma. You see, so we get the parents that we deserve. Some people say, oh, I hate my parents, you know. You should never say that. You should even, shouldn't even think about that because we get the parents that we deserve. You see, why? Because for sure in past lives, we met those father and mothers who became our parents in this lifetime. And we did exactly to them what they are doing to us now. Maybe we were bad parents. We made them suffer and our children became now our parents. This is the law of cause and effect. The equilibrium of life, the balance of life. Remember that the entire universe is suspended within space. What is that? Isn't that a perfect balance, a perfect equilibrium, which is mathematical, you know? Mathematical and also musical. Why mathematical and musical? Because, you see, this is a geometrical calculation, a perfect engineering, a perfect architectural, you know, situation. So there is a perfect equilibrium. Why is it that planets don't hit each other? Maybe it could happen, you know, occasionally, but it doesn't happen all the time when there is an imbalance, you see? So there is a perfect equilibrium. This is also perfect cosmic justice, equilibrium. So we could say in a few words that according to an esoteric axioma, an axioma is a truth not to be denied. It's a truth already verified millions of times. So the axioma is what's above is below. What's below is above. It means what's happening within the universe is happening within ourselves. In a few words, we, all of us, are a perfect replica of the galaxy where we live. The Milky Way, where we are allocated in a tiny little planet called Earth, in a tiny solar system compared with other bigger solar systems, everything is within ourselves. How many millions of planets belong to our galaxy? Now, how many millions of human cells, human molecules, human atomic particles are within ourselves. Don't you feel that there is a correspondence, there is a connection with every planet, every solar system, every constellation within our own galaxy? What about the other galaxies? There are many, many galaxies in the universe. We're not the only one. You see, there is a mathematical connection. And why do we say also music? Because music is a vibration, you see, and that vibration generates movement. 
So all planets and atomic particles which are in constant movement within the universe, they obey to a specific vibration. And that vibration, when it is organized, we call it music. Remember, there are seven musical notes. These seven musical notes produce an effect. You know, did you know, for example, let me give you an example. Did you know that when a military patrol is crossing, walking a bridge, instead of marching, they have to stop their march. They have, they have to walk normally because if they continue marching in a military manner, they can destroy the bridge. Did you know that? Have you ever heard about that? Well, this is the occasion to try to comprehend better what we are trying to say. So the vibration produces changes, all kind of alterations within matter. Did you know, for example, that if you make an experiment, if you play music, okay, you're a musician, you play, let's say, a violin, put some sand, okay, some sand on a piece of, you know, glass. Put some sun, and then you can see the sun on the, on the piece of glass. And play the violin, and watch how these small particles of sand are moving around, following the rhythm and the vibration of the music that you're playing. You see the point? That's exactly what happened with the universe. Planets and atomic particles move because of the music of the universe. Why is it that we cannot hear that music? Because we enter into a stage of involution or degeneration. It means we are supposed to have 12 senses and we have only five. We missed, we lost seven superior senses. And through Gnosis, through Gnosticism, we can learn how to bring them back. This is why the entire human race is paying a very heavy karma already, because the divinity gave us 12 senses. It was a gift from heaven. You know, complete human beings have 12 senses. Why do we have only five? And the five are even worse than the five of an animal. For example, an animal can see better than we can see. An animal can smell better. Dogs can smell better. Dogs, dogs can hear some sounds, special sounds for dogs. Why is it that we cannot hear them? Because our poor ears are atrophied. Our five inferior senses are atrophied. You see, what about the other seven superior senses? Well, they are gone. <laughs> Can we get them back? Yes, of course. So what is the purpose of life? Using the concept karma and dharma, the concept, you know, that very well expressed has been given to us is the Dalai Lama, who is visiting Toronto, Canada very soon. He did mention in his books many, many times that the purpose of life is to create dharma. What is that? To create accounts receivable. To create accounts payable. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> to eliminate accounts payable. To create accounts receivable or good luck. To eliminate our bad luck coming from past lives. Because as we said, we owe a lot to the divinity. We owe a lot to Mother Nature. So, if we transform ourselves, if we eliminate our karma, our accounts payable, we'll be able to create dharma, good luck, which is the purpose of life. Accounts receivable. And after, let's say, we have the possibilities of paying our karma 100%. Well, there is nothing wrong with increasing our account receivable. It means good luck constantly. Whatever you ask the divinity will be given to you. Why is it that many people pray and pray and pray and nothing happens? Because you have to earn the right to, you know, to be given 
by the divinity. If we don't deserve it, if you're a criminal, okay, a criminal mind, and you're asking the divinity to give you the power to kill your enemies, to destroy people, to make people suffer, do you believe the divinity is going to help you? If somebody is going to help you, it's, it's not the divinity. There are evil forces also in the universe. So we have to understand that, you know. People pray to win a lottery, you know, or people pray, you know, to pick up, you know, as many women in a party or in, a, in an orgy or whatever. You see, we have to understand there are cosmic laws in the universe. There is a balance, there is an equilibrium. Those cosmic laws represent the perfect equilibrium of Mother Nature that is being altered by ourselves. Why the global warming today? Why is it that our planet Earth, which is a living, gigantic organism, why is it that it is ill, sick? It's a living organism, and we made it very ill with our own wrong behavior, with our own karmic conduct with our perversity, you know, sometimes we don't even know how bad we are. Why is it that we don't perceive our mistakes until we have to pay for it? When we suffer, we realize that we made a mistake. You see, that's the price we have to pay for making mistakes. Suffering, pain, not only our own individual pain, we transmit that pain to other people. And also, we transmit it to the planet Earth. This is why the global warming. The planet Earth is so sick. It's like a god high fever. And the problem is we're supposed to become a friendly bacteria, you know, to give life to our gigantic living organism where we live. But instead of that, we became a virus. You know, we became a very, very bad entity living on Earth because we forgot our divine spirit. We are disconnected. So are we really Christians or Jewish or Hindus or Muslims or Buddhists? Well, if we practice the principles of all religions, if we live in accordance with divine law, we are going to be true religious individuals. It doesn't matter which religion we have chosen. If we respect cosmic law, we live in accordance, you know, we will create dharma and we will be able to pay our karma, our accounts payable. We'll be able to dissolve our mistakes. In, in other words, you know, connecting all of this with psychology, Gnostic psychology, we have to learn to change our way of thinking because we have obtained the influence of many, many wrong philosophies, many wrong ways of perceiving reality, and also we're very much affected by our egotistic, our egotistic way of life. So our egotistic way of life is connected with our ego, ego, you know, and the problem is our universities are teaching about the ego in a very incomplete manner. They have developed the concept of alter ego and also ego. It's like there is a superior ego called alter ego and there is an inferior ego. When in Gnostic psychology, according to Gnosticism from a psychological angle, we say that the ego and the alter ego are the same. There is nothing better, you know, within the egotistic behavior. So don't confuse ego with soul. A soul means consciousness. The bridge between the divinity be within, you know, between our spiritual being, our real being, God within ourselves, and the mind and the body and the rest of the human organism. So basically our soul is consciousness and the ego is the opposite, unconsciousness. We could say subconscious, unconscious, infraconscious. What's infraconscious? When people become so perverse, so egotistic, 
so selfish, so, I w we could even say, so evil. Th you must know that there are people who enjoy killing other people, you know, or people who enjoy abusing other people, or people who don't care about, you know, suffering of other people, because the psychology of the ego is me, 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 number one, number a thousand, number a million. But the psychology of a soul is all of us are important, all for one and one for all, you know, which is, we could say, a perfect way of thinking. And of course, sooner or later, we will have to learn to have a kind of life like that, you know. We had already golden ages in our planet Earth. And we lost the golden age where everybody lived in accordance with those principles, all for one and one for all. And we know that a new golden age is coming. You know, we are facing very, very hard times, probably a global catastrophe or many of them that will change the geography of the planet Earth. Why is that? But as we said, the planet Earth is very ill. It needs to cure itself with us or without us. So that means that the survivors are the ones who will deserve to survive according to cosmic law, according to the law of karma, dharma. Accounts payable, accounts receivable. Good luck, bad luck. So the ones who will be able to survive will be people who can eliminate their ego. Because the ego is, as we said, is unconsciousness and it's also unfair. It's unjust. You see, it's against cosmic justice. So this is why the Bible or many other sacred books describe the same principles. You know, the earth really will belong to just people. If we practice justice, equilibrium, if we learn to become more spiritual, more fraternal, more loving, more conscious, wiser than before, of course, we'll be able to create a better world, you know, because paradise on earth will come back for a while. And that's going to happen after the global catastrophe when the survivors will be able to recreate a new society a perfect society, all for one, one for all, which is cosmic justice, divine justice. Human justice will become then equivalent to cosmic justice. We will make a perfect connection with the divinity. This is a true religious society. And, you know, in the near future, we'll be able to develop more about this concept and allow me to say this. Today, there is a divorce between science and religion. And why is that? Well, because the experts have convinced themselves that they have nothing to do with each other. Where according to Gnosis, Gnosticism, we are telling you the opposite. There is a perfect connection between science and religion. And let me tell you more. When we create a perfect society, a new golden age after the global catastrophe, which is going to be a new beginning for a new society, a new human race, let me tell you that science and religion will become one. Will you accept that possibility? Well, meditate about it. Try to immerse within these possibilities. Science and religion will become one. Now, so the law of cause and effect, or karma, dharma, is also teaching us that if we make mistakes, we have to pay for them. And we pay normally with pain, with suffering. If we do the right thing, we create dharma. If we care about other people, you know, the law of compensation will give us back our sacrifice. You know, normally good parents there are mothers, mothers that are ready to die to protect their children. You see, and 
when they do that, those children will, ad will adore them. When they grow up, they will take care of them. They will love them. They will provide them with whatever is needed. But there is another case when mothers ignore their children because they never wanted to have children, they will have to pay for it. When they are getting older, they will be put, you know, far away from their children in a place where maybe they will be suffering, isolated, experiencing loneliness, etc., etc. You see, the law of cause and effect is everywhere, everywhere. What about dictatorships? What happened to the Roman Empire? The Roman Empire spread all over Europe, Asia, Africa. They didn't know about America, otherwise they would have come here. Well, the Roman Empire collapsed. Where are they now? Well, they are not a Roman Empire anymore. Because why they disappeared? Because they abused the world. Okay, so this is a, a warning for all modern empires. Okay, be careful because Mother Nature will collect from you and you will disappear from the map of the earth. Instead of being in power, you will become slaves. Now, coming back into the main cause of karma, the main cause of karma is the psychology of the ego. The ego is explained in every religion, every religion. You know, Jesus Christ in Christianity and Catholic Church was teaching about the seven deadly sins, which are lust, arrogance, envy, anger, greed, gluttony, and laziness. Is there anyone missing? Apparently not. So, those seven deadly sins create karma. Our karma itself, when we're in prison within the psychology of the ego, within the psychology of the seven deadly sins, which are demons, you know. Some people don't believe in demons, but I'm telling you that they do exist within ourselves. It's the same animal psychology in an organism that shouldn't be animal anymore because, you know, we have reached this actual stage of evolution where we are now to learn to become humans. We've been given the blueprint to become humans. So the seven deadly sins don't correspond to the human stage. Allow me to say this and please pay attention to my words. The seven deadly sins don't correspond to the human stage. They are part of the animal kingdom. So we are unfair with ourselves when we continue thinking and acting like an animal within a human aspect, a human appearance. So, this is why Jesus Christ came to teach us to annihilate. He said, deny yourself. It means deny the me, 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 me. Annihilate the seven deadly sins and transform them into the seven virtues, which is the opposite. Instead of lust, which is connected with sexuality, shouldn't we learn to make love with love? Because sex should be based on love and respect. Sex is something divine. Number two, anger. Instead of anger, anger is a deadly sin, one of the seven deadly sins. And people believe that being angry is okay. It's not okay, because when you get angry, not only you make people uncomfortable, you hurt people, you abuse people psychologically, and also you kill yourself. If you have an attack of anger, you can have a heart attack or a stroke. You see, what do you get at the end? What is the winning, the winning, the win-win situation? There is nothing to be, you know, to be won. Anger, the opposite of anger, is serenity, to be serene, even if it is the end of the world. An ocean without waves 
a lake without movement of the water. Peace, inner peace. Serenity and patience. Patience means peace, you know, the science of peace. Now we are coming into arrogance, learning to be arrogant. And this is what we've been doing, you know, we've been told that uh, we have to be proud of ourselves, you know. And being arrogant is not good because then you feel better than other people. And I'm telling you, we are all good in different things. I can be great in certain aspects of life, but other people are better than me in different human activities. You see, maybe I'm a lousy cook. I'm a lousy dancer. Well, some people are better cook than I am and better dancer than I am. I can learn from them, but I can be good in other things, you know. Maybe I'm good in, I would say, maybe public speaking or better than other people, or maybe good in studying Gnosticism, etc., etc. That doesn't make me better. I'm just, you know, as good and as bad like most of people. So I'm here to try to improve myself, to expand my capabilities. So instead of being arrogant and selfish, when you're arrogant and selfish, you tend to abuse people. You're in a position of power. You underestimate the others. And unconsciously, you end enslaving other people. You make people suffer. You're increasing your karma. You are creating karma by doing that. Instead of learning to be humble. The founder of Gnostic institutions worldwide, Samael Onveor, has said the only way to reach wisdom is learning to be humble. And after you become wiser than before, you have to be more humble than before. It means learning to be humble is a quality of the spirit. You need the opposite of ego. This is a way of creating dharma, accounts receivable, by learning to be humble. What about greed? Okay, there are movies uh, from Hollywood that teach that greed is good, you know. Many characters have been defending that position and many people on earth are convinced that greed is good. What if I tell you that, you know, you get $10 million and now you want $100 million, and after you get 100 you want to get $1 billion, which is $1,000 million, and then you die. And at the very end, what have you done with your life? Can you take the money to the other side? Of course not. Maybe you were suffering to protect your capital, trying to stay away from partners that wanted to kill you, or maybe employees who hated you because you were greedy, arrogant and selfish, egotistic. So at the end, your karma that you, are, you have created through being greedy, you will have to render account on the other side. You don't have to believe in what I'm saying, okay? Just try to meditate and try to listen to your heart, to your intuition. The 42 judges of karma will judge all of us on the other side after we die. And if you committed mistakes after mistakes, you created accounts payable, you have to pay for it. On the other side, you will be able to see all the pain and suffering that you created around you. And you will suffer every second that you created making people suffer here. I'm not joking. This is the law of equilibrium. This is the law of balance. This is the law of justice. Try to understand that, you know, there is justice in the universe. There is equilibrium, otherwise the planets would be hitting each other if there was no cosmic justice. What about envy? When people are more successful than you are and you hate them because of that. Why do we have to behave like that? Why don't we try to understand them? They might be doing something good that I'm not capable of doing myself. Instead of being angry or envious, shouldn't I learn to be Grateful, you know, and learn from them. Learn from them. Be happy for the success of the others. This is accounts receivable. 
instead of accounts payable, instead of karma. So now, what about, for example, laziness? You know, people feel lazy because either they have a physical illness or psychological illness, or maybe they hate their job, you know, or maybe they are students and they hate what they are, st what they are learning. Maybe their professors or teachers are very boring, you know, etc., etc. Well, instead of laziness, which is pure karma, it will create karma because it became contagious also. You're lazy and you get together with other lazy people and at the end you spread like a virus within society. So instead of being lazy, we should learn to be the opposite. We should what? To be industrious to love what you do, then choose according to your own talents. We all have a talent. We were all born to do something better than others. Discover your potential, discover your talents, discover your, you know, your, your own inner capabilities that we all have. Discover the leader within. And the recommendation is get closer to God. Pray a lot. Talk, learn to talk to God. Meditation is not praying. Meditation is learning to talk, where you ask questions and you get an answer and you listen to the answer and you have a, a connection with the divinity. And the divinity will show you what is your potential, your capabilities. What about gluttony? Gluttony is not only eating too much, it's also drinking heavily. Well, learning to practice moderation is the best, you know. Then you will be healthier and you won't, you won't cook your liver because when you drink too much, you will die in, in the middle of horrible suffering and pain and you will make your family suffer and your friends, you know. So basically, the seven deadly sins are very, very important to be comprehended because they are ego they are karma. They create karma. And they are also animal psychology. Instead of learning to develop the human psychology, which are the seven virtues that we mentioned. Okay? Let's try to remember that. So, and also when we learn to be true humans, we can get out of the animal kingdom. We can experience the perception and the knowledge of the parallel universes. Because what we call heaven, you know, there are nine heavens. Well, what we call heaven is the kingdom of the real humans, the complete human beings who have 12 senses instead of five senses. Now, when we study this cosmic laws of karma dharma, the law of justice, Okay, the 42 judges, according to Egyptian, you know, religion, ancient religion. Some people get, you know, sad. They, they feel, you know, there is no way out. Well, there is a way out. Let me tell you this. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ, who is an incredible, an incredible messenger of God. His sacrifice contributed to one thing. Before he came, it was very hard to establish, you know, not only a relationship with the divinity, but also to negotiate our karma. Did you know that we can negotiate our karma? It means that you can ask the divinity, instead of paying your karma, because we carry a karma from past lives, remember that. Instead of paying our karma with pain, with suffering, we can pay our karma with the law of sacrifice. What is that? The, the law of sacrifice means what Jesus Christ was teaching, you know. Number one, annihilate the ego. Deny yourself, he said. Annihilation of the ego, the animal psychology. Annihilation of myself. Me, 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 me. To transform it into us. We are all part of of an incredible, beautiful universe. We are all part of life. We are all children of the divinity. We are all brothers and sisters. So, take your cross every day. It means a man and a woman 
creating, contributing to creating a perfect society. A perfect father, a perfect mother, perfect husband, perfect wife, and developing a family where there are also children searching for perfection, which is reaching the real human being's kingdom, people without ego, teaching children to eliminate the ego since they are very young. Nothing wrong with that. This is awakening consciousness, awakening our soul, creating our soul, developing our soul. And finally, Jesus Christ was teaching, follow me. What is that? After you learn to practice this knowledge, you know, the cosmic Christ doctrine, which is connected with all religions, then you see, we practice the third recommendation of Jesus Christ. Do what I do. This is what he meant. It means sacrifice for humanity, means share with the entire human race this knowledge to annihilate the ego, to annihilate karma, and to create dharma, and to create a different psychology, a, a true human psychology, to contribute to create paradise on earth. So, just to finish, you know, our lecture of today, the ego is shown in every religion. You don't know it? You never knew about that? Well, in a few words, the same seven deadly sins are described in the Jewish religion. Remember the struggle between David and Goliath? David represents the spirit and the soul of an individual who was searching for perfection, who wanted to eliminate his karma and to create dharma. And Goliath is the ego, the animal psychology, the same Satan of all religions. And he defeated Goliath, throwing a stone into the middle of the eyebrows. What is that? The eyebrows represent the third eye, the sixth sense, which is clairvoyance, or creative imagination, being able to see the future, being able to see the parallel universes, being able to see the purpose of life, awakening, awakening, awakening. He defeated Goliath. He defeated the ego. What about the Buddhist religion? In Buddhism, they call it the psychological aggregates. I mean, something aggregated that we shouldn't have. We created our own ego in past lives. And now the ego, through many lifetimes, becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. The psychological aggregates have to be annihilated. This is why in Buddhism, they call it Buddhist annihilation. What about the ancient Egyptian religion? In the ancient Egyptian religion, they spoke about the red demons of Zeth. Zeth is an Egyptian name that represents Satan or the ego. Accounts payable, karma. Okay, the demon that we all have to annihilate, the red demons of Seth. Seth is the Satan and the demons are his disciples that we all carry within our psychological universe. You see, what about the Hindu religion? In yoga, the Hindu religion describes, you know, they speak about the battles of Lord Arjuna. It means that Lord Arjuna was, you know, a, an aristocratic individual that also incarnated the Hindu Christ, Krishna, by annihilating his own ego. The battles of Lord Arjuna represent the struggle, the tremendous battlefield that happened within our psychological universe, defeating our own demons. Remember my words. And this is why the Muslim religion speaks about the holy war. Holy war is not a physical war. It's a psychological war where we use the energies, the divine energies coming from God, our own virtues, our own consciousness, our own soul, to try to defeat our own ego, our own demons. So the holy war represents that. This is why a true Muslim should be able to understand this. It's a religion of peace. 
but the war is psychological. It happens within ourselves. And I'm telling you, all other religions teach exactly the same principles. So don't forget what we have just said. That this is the law of cause and effect. Karma, Dharma. Karma accounts payable. Dharma accounts receivable. Karma represents ego. The animal psychology. Dharma represents the soul. Awakening our soul consciousness. A true human psychology. Let's learn to become true humans. So there is another esoteric axioma, which is the lion of the law can be defeated with the scale because a superior cosmic law washes out an inferior law. Remember that. If you're doing the law of sacrifice, you will be able to pay karma. Instead of paying with pain and suffering, you pay with sacrifice. Sacrifice means sacred office. It's a divine effort to reach the divinity. The day we eliminate wars on the face of the earth, that day we are going to be able to move higher and very close to the real human being's kingdom, to live in peace. So thanks for downloading this podcast. The website is rickyradio.com. Thank you very much. All the best.